Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us. I am back with Dr. Hart himself, the founder, president, and owner of BioCybernaut. Dr. Hart, thank you so much for being with us. Hi, Doug. Happy to be with you again. Yes. We've had so much fun talking about a variety of subjects. Uh, Dr. Hart, one question that came through uh, by Spent was, you know, what's the difference between alpha brainwaves and theta brainwaves? Can you explain that to us? Mm. Well, uh, to to give a uh, a beginning description would probably take a couple of hours. So, <laughs> so what we'll do is we'll just do a few highlights. Perfect. Uh, and starting with the basic science, uh, theta waves are those between uh, four and seven cycles per second, and alpha waves are between eight and thirteen cycles per second. So Theta is a deeper wave. Now, for most people, the amplitude of their biggest alpha it can be 10 times bigger than the amplitude of their biggest theta. Also, um, alpha is pretty much there all the time. It might be big, it might be small, but almost everybody has a little bit of alpha going pretty continuously. Whereas theta is much more off and on. It's there or it's not there. You might say theta is binary and alpha is continuous. Or you could say alpha is analog and theta is binary. Uh, and so uh, those are the, you know, sort of the basic differences. Now, alpha is maximized when uh, people are uh, alert, uh, well-rested, awake, uh, not stressed, and sitting perfectly upright. I remember, because uh, I did the Yogananda lessons, I was initiated into Kriya Yoga by uh, Swami Kriyananda, one of Yogananda's direct disciples. And Yogananda said, when you're meditating, the ideal posture is to imagine that you have a hook in the top of your head and your whole body is hung from that hook. So your spine is perfectly erect. And uh, we f have at BioCyberNod uh, alpha chairs that support and encourage you to sit in a still upright posture. Whereas theta uh, is, because it's uh, uh, closer to sleep, is benefited by uh, a recumbent posture. So our theta chairs are actually recliners. And so people lie back in the theta chairs um, and they're almost horizontal. And the monitor is suspended from the ceiling. So when they look, when they are lying back and they look up, they, that's where they get their feedback scores. And so, uh, whereas the monitor for alpha is like on the table in front of the person where they're sitting in their comfortable upright chair. And so those are some of the uh, basic differences between the alpha waves and the theta waves. And also the basic differences in the posture that is needed to support the alpha. Now, it turns out that when people go into theta, they lose what's called postural tonus. And so if you were sitting up and you went into a theta state, you could fall out of the chair. And that would not be a, a happy end to your uh, theta session. So this is why, another reason why, we have people lie down in big, fluffy, comfortable recliner chairs for doing their theta. Now, uh, there are two principal different types of theta. One is drowsy theta, where the waves look like pointy little croquet wickets, uh, irregular in uh, spacing and frequency. They uh, are faster and slower within the four to seven hertz range. Um, and uh, then there's what we call mystical theta, which it's in the theta frequency range, but it's sinusoidal and it comes in spindles. It looks like slowed down alpha actually. And so drowsy theta is not of that much interest, uh, whereas mystical theta conveys incredibly deep and profound experiences. Now, the alpha uh, will also vary in frequency. We can see that as the alpha spindles, uh, if they are, we show the raw EEG in black on the polygraph, the digital uh, electronic polygraphs, and then the alpha, or the theta is shown in blue. 
And uh, in the alpha, when a spindle speeds up, the up and down strokes are closer together and there's less movement, so the less white shows through. So it, looking at it, they actually look like a darker blue. If the frequency of the alpha is a little slower, there's more white space between and the spindles look like light blue. So in a glance, you can look at the polygraph, you can see, oh, there's the alpha speeding up, oh, there's the alpha slowing down. And so uh, theta also uh, has two distinct um, provinces, uh, one we call slow theta and one we call fast theta. And there are deep psychological differences uh, between fast theta and slow theta. Now, when we're giving people feedback, just like we in feedback in alpha, we give feedback in alpha that includes the slow, the middle, and the fast alpha. And so what you get is uh, you, you get feedback. doesn't matter where in the alpha range you are, you're getting the feedback. In our advanced trainings, yes, we do train on just fast alpha, or just middle alpha, or just slow alpha. And in uh, advanced theta trainings, we also will train on slow theta or fast theta. But in the first six theta trainings, levels one through six, it's all broadband uh, theta. And people are lying down and uh, doing this work. Now, in terms of one of the instructions I give people in theta trainings is head straight for sleep. And just before you go unconscious, make a sharp left turn or right turn <laughs> and hang out there. And so it is a deep state. And uh, when you get there, uh, amazing things happen. One of which is uh, phantasmagorial imagery. Uh, I'll tell a story about when I first started doing theta trainings. This was, I was working with Foster Gamble. We were doing a company called Mind Center. And uh, uh, Foster was encouraging me uh, to do theta trainings for our uh, increasingly large public audience. And I said, well, Foster, <clears throat> I have certain resistances to providing theta to the general public. And he goes, well, why is that? <clears throat> and I said, well, uh, you won't believe anything that I tell you probably. So why don't I give you a theta training and I'll follow you home every night. Make sure you get there. And that way you'll see. So the first two days were fine. Uh, the third day, uh, he finishes his theta training. He gets into his uh, Jaguar and he starts driving uh, and I'm following him. Uh, the few first few traffic lights were uneventful, but then there was a red light. And so he stopped and then the light turned green and he continued to sit there. The light turned red. It turned green. He continued to sit there. He went through three cycles of red and green before on the fourth green, he took off and continued driving home uneventfully. And so when we got home, I, because I, I, I told him he was, he was astonished. He was completely unaware that he had done that. And so now the, the protocols then were much shorter uh, than they are now. Uh, and we can go deeper because of the longer protocols, but also what we would do at Mind Center, we were in a high-end business park in uh, Palo Alto with little manicured uh, grass hills covered with uh, bowling and with uh, you know, golf green uh, type grass and little duck ponds. And so we would confiscate people's keys. And uh, at the end of the training, before we would give them their keys back, we would ask them to take off their shoes and socks and go walk in the wet grass. Uh, right outside the building. And then we would bring them back in and I would look into their eyes. And if their pupils were still dilated, I would send them out for another walk in the cold, wet grass uh, until their pupils came back to a smaller size. And then we would give them their keys and they could go home. Now, at BioCybernaut, now the Theta trainings have extensive debriefings and likely dinner at the end of that. Uh, so we don't have that issue anymore. But the point is that in Theta, people can lose postural tonus uh, and they can also be sufficiently spacey that it's not safe to, dr safe to drive until they come back to more ordinary uh, forms of reality. Uh, and so uh, the Alpha training, uh, well, I was talking about, I was going to talk about the uh, phantasmagorial imagery. So now uh, we're at Mind Center. Uh, 
and this is about 1990, 1991, I'm doing theta trainings. And people would start to have these incredible visuals, like waking dreams that would be incredibly vivid and brilliant. And when everybody in the group was having this, usually by about the third day, then I would say, okay, now I want you all to pause for a moment and think of that moment in your life when reality seemed the most real. For some people, it was when their first child was born and they were there and they received the infant into their arms. Or maybe there was one girl who had uh, fallen off her bike into a, a moist, a soft grass and she was able to hear the earthworms crawling you know, under the earth. Whatever the experience is uh, where life seemed most real, I said, okay, now rate that a 10. On a scale of 0 to 10, that's a 10. And everybody was able to come up with an experience that was where reality was the most real. And then I said, okay, now on that scale of zero to 10, where would you rate your theta experiences, your imagery that you're having? And people would kind of shuffle a little nervously and, you know, uh, scratch their chin. And then they would give me a number between 30 and 40 on wow. a scale of 10. Okay. So you want to experience reality three or four times more real than real? Well, the theta training is in your future. And Absolutely. so now other cool things about theta is that theta gives you access to the Akashic records, uh, an energetic database of all knowledge that was, is, and ever will be. Uh, and I've, I've spoken previously about uh, Thomas A. Edison, the inventor of the electric light bulb, who used theta in a pre-technological way uh, to pull more than 1,000 patents worth of material out of the Akashic Records. And his method was to sleep deprive himself, sleeping only four hours every night and in two-hour stretches, so there was never continuous sleep, usually takes about 90 minutes to reach Delta the first time, so he was real Delta deprived. And then he would lie in an armchair in his lab with a notebook and pen handy and drift off to try to drift to sleep easy because he was so tired while thinking about something he wanted to invent. Well, when he would, and, and to make sure that he wouldn't just fall into deep sleep, he would hold in each hand a large steel ball bearing, draping those over the edge of the arms of the chair with a metal pie pan underneath. So when he hit theta, and lost postural tonus, he lost his grip, and those steel ball bearings would fall with a clattering din into the pans, waking him up, and then he would take his pen and he would write down whatever little piece of that invention he'd been able to snag out of the Akashic Records, and then he'd recover the ball bearings and he'd lie back in his chair and try to fall asleep again. Uh, and in that way, progressively, he pulled material for over a thousand patents out of the Akashic Records. And so now the fact that you know how to ride a bicycle doesn't mean that you're going to know where the interesting trails are. Okay. And so learning theta is a prerequisite. Like you have to know how to ride a bicycle in order to go, you know, mountain biking on the really cool trails. And so there's a separate process for this. I remember one time, Ann Jensen, who was a reader in the Akashic Records, who came um, and she did Alpha 1, Alpha 2, and then she did Theta 1. Now, in her tradition, there was a secret prayer that she and the others in her tradition would have to do in order to open the records. Well, after she did her Theta training, she didn't need the secret prayer anymore. She'd simply turn on Theta and she would be in the records. And there was uh, one time when um, Russ Leonard and I, who had done uh, work with Anne, and Russ had done a number of uh, alpha trainings, we spent a weekend with Anne as she provided us with the special instructions for entering the Hall of Records. And uh, everyone's experience is different, but for me, uh, went into this huge library and uh, there were these gigantic green marble columns. The columns were so big around that if 10 people joined hands, they wouldn't be able to complete the circle. And the columns went up out of sight. They actually went up through the clouds. And the book libraries have stacks, you know, shelves, and then the books are in the stacks. Well, the shelves were there, 
but the books were just like energy vibrations, kind of like you see in a mirage. And so it was like, a, it, was, it was the way I perceived uh, the Akashic records. And so then what you do is you just intend to pull out a book on information that is relevant to what it is you want to do. And that information is yours. You, you are it. Wow. So that's one of the benefits of the theta training. Fantastic. Well, it kind of reminds me of the matrix, which a lot of people watching this have probably seen <laughs> or he gets plugged in and he comes out and says, I know Kung Fu. Uh, <laughs> fantastic. Well, Dr. Hart, as always, I appreciate your time. I know how busy you are and all the research you're doing over there at BioCybernet and the people you're helping. So thank you so much for spending a little of that time with us today. It's a delight, Doug. Absolutely a delight. I look forward to doing it again. So thank you so much. Thank you, Doug. Hi, I'm Tony Robbins. Listen, if you are looking to improve your brain, your psyche, your ability, your emotions, your ability to really maximize your performance, um, and you want to really dig into your brain, my dear, my dear friend, Dr. Jim Hart and his BioCybernet program is extraordinary. I've been through it myself. My wife, Sage, has, members of my family have, and we found it to be truly extraordinary. But it is not for the faint at heart. Unless you're dead serious about really taking things to the next level, don't bother. We went through the Alpha program designed to maximize your ability to have create Alpha waves. And it was challenging and it was incredibly rewarding. And I'd recommend it to anybody serious about improving the quality of their lives or including the quality of their family lives as well. So check out Cybernaut, check out Dr. Jim Hart. And uh, if you do, I think you'll be really, really pleased. And the entire time you are learning to think and how you think the, these electrodes create sounds. And you learn how to put yourself in the zone of Alpha. But it's a bitch. It's horrible. I wouldn't recommend it to anybody that wants easy experiences, but I'd recommend it to anybody that wants to grow immensely. And by the, and the first day, I'm like, who do I got to shoot to get out of this thing? Oh, it's me. I'm the one that did this shit. <laughs> right? But by the end of the week, all three of us were able to go in this state of alpha. And if you're familiar with alpha, the best way I can describe alpha is there's no problem that can't be solved in alpha. Because every problem that we have was created by us. Thank you for being here and absorbing this information about the science of brainwaves and about the stories of people whose lives have been beneficially altered, improved by doing brainwave training at BioCybernet. And now I'm reaching out to you to invite you to come and be a part of the BioCybernet adventure. BioCybernauts are to inner space what astronauts are to outer space. So come and adventure with us. And if you'd like to leave a comment on the videos, you can do that. Or there's a link you can click if you'd like to learn more. We welcome you to BioCybernaut.